Now that we know how to name alkenes, let's look at the physical properties. And um, the physical properties help us to understand where the alkenes come from in the first place. So you know of the offshore work where people get the oil, the gasoline from the crude oil. So you take the crude oil, which is a mixture of different hydrocarbons, compounds containing carbons and hydrogens, and you boil it up. So when you boil it up by method of fractional distillation, you get different fractions of the crude oil being distilled out based on their different boiling points. Okay, so heavy fractions can be cracked into smaller, lighter ones, cracked by distillation by high temperature, or broken down into chopped up into small pieces, into smaller ones. And of course, one would use catalyst if you may be, if you may want, or you can use uh, other scientific methods to separate them. So usually, it's like you get to use a distiller, right? And then this distiller has different outlets. So uh, it's like your your crude oil is inside this big, huge container and you're heating it up. So the ones, the fractions of the crude oil that have low molecular weight will boil out first at, at the lowest temperature and they're gonna come out. So the heavier ones will come out from down here, which include uh, 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 what's used to make uh, roads, like like I think tar. Those are high molecular weights, and some other greases. High molecular weight compounds will come from down here, and low molecular weight compounds will come from up here. For example, gasoline. So that's where the hydrocarbons come from. They come from crude oil. Um, which has been boiled up into fractions. Now, talking of physical properties. So the physical properties of molecules are, in, are dependent on the type of intermolecular forces. I want you to note the term inter. Inter means between. And then intra. Intra will mean within. So for example, if I take hexane without showing the carbons and hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, and draw another molecule itself, in between the forces of attraction that I have should be intermolecular forces. But within the molecule, like this bond right here, that's intra. That the covalent bond is intra. Intramolecular. While this one's in here will be intramolecular. And in fact, specifically, those are uh, London dispersion forces. We'll talk about that shortly. So whenever you're boiling alkenes, organic compounds, it's these forces that you're breaking to break the molecules, the two molecules apart. And the boiling point will be dependent on also the mass, of course, the bigger the molecule, the more the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point. Okay. Now the intermolecular forces in conjunction with the intramolecular forces will dictate solubility of the molecule, the ability of the molecule to dissolve um, in a solvent. The strength of the interaction between molecules also dependent on the shape. Okay, the over shape of the molecule. So we've talked about mass dictating the boiling point. We've talked about IMF dictating solubility and now also shape dictating uh, IMFs, which will in turn dictate boiling points. Okay, there are three types of intermolecular forces. By decreasing the strength, the first one is hydrogen bonding, which is stronger than dipole dipole, which is stronger than van der Waals in terms of um, decrease in strength. So hydrogen bonds, intermolecular forces are stronger than dipole dipole, and dipole dipole are stronger than London dispersion. 
So the first one we need to discuss is hydrogen bonding. What's hydrogen bonding? That's a type of a dipole-dipole. We'll explain what dipole-dipole is. Uh, that is involved in bringing molecules together. And usually hydrogen bonding is characterized by the presence of hydrogen atoms bonded to electronegative elements like oxygen, nitrogen, um, sulfur, and when it's also bonded to fluorine. So whenever hydrogen is bonded to these electronegative elements, you expect that two of those molecules can do hydrogen bonding. They are the strongest of the IMFs. Remember we said hydrogen bonds are stronger than dipole-dipole than London dispersion. And here I'm giving you a very important point. To predict whether hydrogen bonding will occur, you want to see a hydrogen bonded to any of these electronegative elements, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur. The best example is in water. Whenever you draw the Lewis structure of water, you'll have two lone pairs. So remember, uh, dipole moments points towards the more electronegative element, which means oxygen will have a high electron density where the lone pairs that are making these bonds will be very close to oxygen and hydrogen. So oxygen will be partially negative because of a high electron density or cloud around it, which means the hydrogens will be partially positive. So because of these charges, then we can combine two molecules of water together. In fact, if oxygen is partially negative and the hydrogen of the second molecule is partially positive, they should attract because opposite, opposite charges attract. So in between, you're going to get what we call H-bonding. Again, like I say, if any of the molecule has hydrogens attached to any of these electronegative elements except I expect hydrogen bonding. So water stays in liquid form because of this intermolecular force called hydrogen bonding, which holds the several molecules together. In fact, I can bring another molecule right here, which again will experience hydrogen bonding between the partially negative oxygen and the partially positive hydrogen. And now you get a cluster of molecules together, keeping the substance in liquid state. If hydrogen bonds were not strong, then we'll not get the liquid state, you'll get the gaseous state. All right? So you also expect hydrogen bonding in ammonia. There's a lone pair there to make octet around the nitrogen. So again, dipole moments points towards the electronegative element. I told you electronegativity increases across the periodic table. Okay, so hydrogen is way to the back. So nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. The dipole moments point towards the nitrogen. Nitrogen will be partially negative. The hydrogens will be partially positive. Bring two molecules of ammonia together. The partially positive hydrogen of, another, of a second molecule will get attracted to the partially negative nitrogen of the first molecule. In between, you get what we call hydrogen bonding. Okay. Okay, so... Um, you're wondering what this is. This is just a representation showing that where the when this where this bluish, that's where you have the positive character. Where this brownish, orangish, that's orangish, that's where you get the negative character, just like in water or in ammonia. All right. So next type of IMF intermolecular force is dipole-dipole. This goes hand in hand with electronegativity which is the affinity of an atom for electrons, electronegativity. Okay, these forces arise from attraction of oppositely charged atoms other than hydrogen, not hydrogen, in molecules. The molecules may have a permanent dipole. Um, generally, in organic molecules, they result in the presence of CX bonds where X is more electronegative than C. So that's what I'm saying. Dipole-dipole goes with the electronegativity. They are weaker than hydrogen bonding with a strength of about 5 to 10 kilojoules. Hydrogen bonds had a strength of about 5 to 25 kilojoules, which means hydrogen bonds are stronger than dipole-dipole. Let's explain in detail what dipole-dipole means. 
So consider this molecule, methyl chloride. Okay, so the chlorine has, uh, chlorine is more electronegative than the carbon, obviously, it's farthest to, it's farthest to the right of the periodic table. It's a halogen. So dipole moments will point towards the chlorine, which means the chlorine will have higher electron density. It is going to take partial negative charge. The carbon will take a partial positive charge. So that's why we have these partial charges here. Here we are looking at uh, the covalent bond. We are looking at intra. But now if you bring two of these molecules close by, okay, the partially negative chlorine will get attracted to the partially positive carbon. There's no hydrogen bonding in between because, again, we don't have any hydrogen bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, or fluorine. So there's no hydrogen bonding. So we can only talk about dipole-dipole. All right? So same applies here. Okay? Carbon be partially positive, nitrogen, which is more electronegative than carbon on your periodic table, be partially negative. So bring these two molecules together, then we'll have to, I think we'll have to swap them and write them, write the two like this. So we show how these opposite charges are attracting. If this is partially positive, it's going to be attracted to the partially negative nitrogen, this dipole dipole. There's a dipole moment on this. There's a dipole moment on this. So in between them is dipole dipole. Right in between. You get dipole dipole. That's why we call it dipole dipole. Each molecule has a dipole. So dipole dipole. And then here carbon is partially positive. The nitrogen down on the second molecule is partially negative. Then again that's a dipole dipole. So that's how you make dipole dipole. Where the partial positive and partial negative of the other molecule get at, attract each other. Okay. So those are dipole-dipole. The weakest of the three hydrogen bonding dipole-dipole in Van der Waals is Van der Waals intermolecular force, otherwise called London dispersion force, and they arise from just the spread or movement of electrons within a molecule to induce, um, to induce charges due to polarization. Or distribution of the electrons so for this one you get temporary dipole moment it's not permanent here it's permanent in dipole dipole, dipole is permanent but in London dispersion it's temporary okay the induced dipole moments are very brief they're temporary and they disappear when the electrons move to new locations within the molecule and the strength of London dispersion forces is 2 to 5 kilojoules, which is less than dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding. They are weak. So to explain how these di uh, induced dipoles or London dispersions are formed, we're going to use an alkane structure. So let's say you have three structures of 2,2-dimethyl propane. So you really see there's no electronegative element in the structure. So if you could take like one of these as a whole, you know you have electrons, you have partial negative and partial charges, very partial, very partial, positive, very partial negative. So initially you would have had probably a random spread, a random spread of these charges, right? Random, they're random, they're ever all over the place. But now if you bring this molecule close to another one, which has the same random partial charges, if you bring them close, then you're going to get repulsion. The partial, post, partial positive will repel. The partial negative will repel. So what results? So let's take the volume of two of these molecules and say the partial negative will go away from each other and the partial positive will get close to the partial negative of the second molecule. Okay. When, the, when these partials come close on this side, they'll repel the partial positive that were random, randomly placed here. So you see, that's induced, that's induction of dipole-dipole. And they, these charges keep going 
and flowing around so they are temporary so you get temporal dipole dipole and the forces that you get here are called London they are called London dispersion again I repeat where there are no strong electronegative elements in a structure you get induced dipole where initially the charges the partial charges were randomly spread on the structure like this structure and this structure which could be this and this and then when you bring the two structures close by you get repulsion of equal charges and that causes polarization where the partial positive will be close to partial negative you get London dispersion which are temporarily they're temporarily and weak so so to speak uh, London dispersive forces are in all organic molecules but they are the only ones that you'll see in aliphatic hydrocarbons like alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes, where there's no oxygen, no nitrogen, no sulfur, no halogens. Like these structures will have only, they will have only London dispersion forces, intermolecular forces, because they are on, they are all hydrocarbons. This will be the only type of the IMFs here. Like I said, Hydrocarbons will only have the London dispersion forces. They will not have dipole dipole. They will not have hydrogen bonding. Now, this is an isomer of that. It's a constitution isomer. Notice that the boiling point of 2,2-dimethylpropane is lower than the boiling point of pentane, the straight chain. The two of them have the formula C5H12. Both of them, they have the same chemical formula but different structural formula, so they are constitution isomers. Decrease in chain length or, or rather branching, like here this is highly branched. Branching decreases boiling point. Branching also decreases melting point. So this is highly branched. The boiling point is 10. This is not branched. You don't have substituents. The boiling point is 36. So branching decreases boiling point and melting point. And to emphasize that, again, if you have the isomers of what we call penten, which are that, that, and that, boiling point is going to decrease as you do much of branching using the same formula C5H12. To draw the structural isomers. So linear alkenes will have high boiling point than branched alkenes. So physical properties. Let's look at dipole moments. If you bring these two molecules together, so let me say you have another molecule of the same here. I would expect that you get dipole dipole. Why so? Because there's a carbon here and there's an oxygen. I expect dipole moments here pointing towards the oxygen, which will make oxygen negative, partially negative. This will be partially positive, partially negative, partially positive. So the partially negative oxygen of the first molecule will get attracted to the partially positive carbon of the second molecule. And in between them, the intermolecular force is going to be dipole dipole because we definitely have dipole moments on both so this will be dipole dipole and we know that dipole moments are stronger than london dispersion which is going to be seen in hydrocarbons molecules that have only carbons and hydrogens will have london dispersion forces so you see the boiling point of this molecule of this liquid of this of a mixture of this molecules will be higher at 101.7 than whenever you have intermolecular forces london dispersion forces which will give you 63.3 this was 101.7 this is 63.3 of course dipole dipole imfs are stronger than london dispersion forces the molecular weight is the same if you sum up the masses of the elements that make the structures the molecular weights are the same okay so the stronger the intermolecular force, the higher the boiling point. Okay, so hydrogen bonding is expected on this structure because, of course, you have OH. 
the oxygen will be partially negative, the hydrogen partially positive. Um, so hydrogen bonding structures will have a higher boiling point than one that has London dispersion. Here you have dipole-dipole because oxygen is more electronegative than the carbons. So it will be partially negative and the carbon will be partially positive. The carbon here will be partially positive. These two will attract. So in between the intermolecular force is dipole. Dipole-dipole. Uh, because the partially negative oxygen of the first molecule will be attracted to the partially positive carbon bonded to the oxygen of the second molecule. So London dispersion in here, intermolecular force, dipole-dipole in there, dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding. Look at the bonding point. They are different. Now, hydrogen bonding will have a higher boiling point than London dispersion and dipole-dipole. The shape of crowding can also become a problem because here you have CH3 and all, all you have here is that are the baby hydrogens if I would draw them out. The molecular weight is the same. One will take this as highly branched, right? It's branched. The nitrogen is highly substituted. This one is not branched. So where, where there is branching, the boiling point will be less. 36 here. Here there's no branching. This is 78 degrees. But again, also the shape matters, which goes with branching anyway. So both these amines, of course, this is a tertiary amine, this is a primary amine. Both these are amines. This one is highly branched, less branched, low boiling point, higher boiling point. The atomic mass is the same. The molecular mass is the same. Solubility, like dissolves like. So where you get hydrogen bonding, you expect that, for example, alcohols to dissolve in water because both of them have hydrogen bonding. Okay, Like vitamin C, you dissolve it in water before you drink it because there are these OHs that can create hydrogen bonds with H2O molecules, hence dissolving the vitamin C powder. Okay, Based on like dissolves like. You learn that in the lab. We'll continue with conformation isomers next.